Hi, good morning everyone. My name is Rajesh Jam and this is my contact number and email. You can reach out to me for any issues or any questions related to the domain separation. Uh, okay, today we will understand what is the domain separation in ServiceNow. So we have precise uh, agenda for today. So let's have a look on the agenda. So uh, what is domain separation? when to use when not to use the domain separations how we can activate the domain separations and uh, uh, how can we set up the service now instance in the domain separation separated environment so we will understand all these concept in today's tutorial so uh, let's understand what exactly the domain separation is so domain separation is only the logical grouping of the companies so I can say logical grouping of the domains. So let's understand the way uh, we will go to the definition till later. Let's understand how exactly it works and then we'll come to the definition. So in domain separated environment, we have one top company or as well as we have the global domain. Okay. So domain separation helps you to separate the data for the various associated customers or companies or subsidiary companies and uh, it helps you to have that logical grouping of the data across the various customers so we have one top parent company where uh, the top parent company is working as the MSP so it's a um, uh, it when it's using as a MSP uh, this top company does want their processes and policies to be followed by various sub companies so we set up this kind of parent child structure and this parent child structure have the logical grouping of the data and this whole concept is called domain separations in service now so we are using this parent child concept to create a single service now instance which can be used by the multiple customers okay so let's understand few concept here what exactly the top company what is global domain what is the uh, child domains those things so we have one um, managed service provider concept where is the top company is there so top company does define their global policies processes those global processes and processes are supposed to be followed by all underlying child. So those underlying child are the individual customers or might be the subsidiary companies of this top company. So let's understand with the example here. Okay. So uh, let's say we have one company uh, that is uh, uh, in that is defined in global domain so we have one administrative user sitting up in the uh, setting up at one reason that global administrative user want their multiple subsidiary companies in different different reasons so let's say this uh, com customer one or sub company one situated in uk sub company two situated in us sub company three situated in india so the administrative user who is defined in top company want the uh, reporting from all other domains UK, US, India. Then we define one user uh, in the top company and this particular user who is defined in the top company should be able to see the details related to all these subsidiaries. Okay. So this does help to define the global policies reporting concept and that's why we do set up the structure like this now uh, other benefit to st structure like this is if we have a user defined in customer one or subsidiary for the uk we doesn't want uk customer to uh, look the data for the us customers so that's how we have the logical separation of data like UK customer cannot see the data of US customer US customer cannot see the data of US or uh, sorry UK or India customers. So that's how it's logically separated logically grouped. But 
the user who is in top company can see everything okay another thing we have, you you can see the global domain so global domain is the domain where we define the common set of rules scripts processes administrative tasks okay which will be inherited by all these subdomains now uh, we need to understand one thing we can have only one primary domain that's called top company okay so whatever uh, whatever rules policies will be defined at global domain will be inherited by all subsidiaries but we have certain level of uh, domain separations provided by service now where the uh, where some applications only support the data level separation where some support the requester or fulfiller level separations so uh, like you know we have uh, these kind of uh, domain separated applications we have so service now have uh, like if you see in service now we have multiple applications so the listed in left menu like incident problem change configuration service level management performance uh, and many more so few of them are data only separated few are level 1 level 2 and level 3 separated so service now does provide a very good documentation on it and uh, if you go through it you will understand how the domain separation support structure works for this okay at high level when we see the data only it does support the data level logical separations it doesn't support from top to uh, bottom route for the data okay where well, level one supports the requester perspective domain kind of separations where domain specific configuration is managed by the instance owners okay level 2 does support requester as well as fulfiller where you can have the separate business logics processes application policies for individual domains so level 1 most of the things are inherited from the parent domain where level 2 you can have the individual business logic processes and application policies for those uh, domains so like you know incident problem configuration management does fall under the level 2 where the change does fall the level 1 we have a defined route of data uh, from parent to child in level 1 itself and that also be part of the level 2 because level 2 does support the requester as well as the fulfiller concept level 3 is the tenant self-managed configuration you can have your individual uh, priority metrics incident uh, impact metrics so as of now only the performance analytics is the application which is supported in current version of the uh, level 3 domain submissions okay so uh, let's now understand when we should use the domain separation and when we should not use the domain separations so when we have to maintain the global process and global reporting we should use this concept when you are not in need of the global processes when your subsidiary companies are following the isolated processes and you don't do not define or you do not need a centralized kind of reporting you need not to use the domain separated environment when you have a separated business unit or entities following the same processes policies we should use the domain separations when your individual business unit might need certain tweaks in the process then also you can use it the domain separations so here it does uh, like level 2 uh, level 2 application separation does help to define the individual processes for some of the applications but when your sub organizations need the specialized processes to be followed by individual subsidiaries we should not use the domain separations okay in nutshell if i want to reiterate 
when we are supposed to use the global processes and reporting use the domain separation when your uh, subsidiary companies or various customers wants to follow their own processes and policies do not use the domain separations okay